Hey, my name is William and welcome to the Green Lizard USA YouTube channel. I'm working on a really exciting high quality video with drone footage and 360 GoPro footage. A buddy of mine is helping me with it. It's going to take a little time before I'm able to actually publish it. So while he's working on it, I want to show you a little bit about this boat build. It's a jet john boat that I made with two Predator engines from Harbor Freight that have a three inch water pump attached to them. So this is just a little snapshot, a few uh, few slides, and I'll talk to uh, each of the steps from the day I bought this boat all the way until the first time I put it in the water. Hope you enjoy. All right, so step one, obviously I had to buy the boat. I paid $700 here locally in Richmond, Virginia for a 1978 Alumacraft John boat that was 15 feet long and about five feet wide in the back and that came on the trailer with a trolling motor. The trailer was in pretty rough shape so I was very happy when I got it home and parked it in front of my garage. Here's what the front of the boat looked like. There was a little depth finder, you can see the trolling motor, there was a carpeted area on that front seat and some plywood so I was my first step was to really clean it all up. The back of the boat had the same kind of setup, a single seat and some plywood on the floor. So I pulled that up and started cleaning it. The trailer was in pretty rough shape, but the first thing I wanted to do was just uh, go ahead and put lipstick on the pig. And I painted the green trailer black just for aesthetic reasons. And you can see all the uh, taped off areas. I didn't want black spray paint. And I bagged the wheels and uh, put on a mask and started shaking the rattle cans. And here's the finished product, all painted black. And that paint's actually stood up pretty good over the last two years, so uh, good job on Rust-Oleum spray paint. Pretty soon after I got the boat, I wanted to see what it would look like with a normal outboard motor. So I grabbed an old Evinrude that my dad had and just put it on there just to see what I thought. But uh, it didn't take long before I was sure I wanted to build a jet john boat. So in one of those first pictures, you may have seen that carpet on the front of the boat or the bow of the boat. Ripped the carpet off and started scraping away at all the carpet glue to clean up the front of the boat. I wanted to take everything back to just raw aluminum so it wouldn't have any nasty stains or smells. The transom was rotten. I'm pretty sure that's a lyric in a country song, but anyway, the transom was rotten and I went ahead and pulled out that board. Here's the transom board coming out. You can see more of the rot behind the transom there on the left side. And on the right, you can see the hardware I used. I picked basically one type of bolt to use for everything on the entire build. So it was a quarter 20 type bolt, all different lengths, bottom from a master car. And it was really easy because all I needed was one Allen wrench to stick in the head and one regular wrench to put on the nut. I took the old rotten transom and actually laid it on a piece of treated three quarter inch plywood and sort of traced what I knew I needed to make. And this is just another picture of the layout for the transom and firing up the worm drive skill saw to make the cut. So once I finished doing all the cleaning and getting the seat removed and the transom and scraping all the carpets off, this was as clean as it was going to get. So at this point, it started getting pretty exciting because I actually bought another water pump and had both of them in the boat and started to visualize what I was trying to make. Here's a little doodle I came up with. Uh, looks like that's dated back in April of 2020, right after COVID hit. Of course, you know, in the midst of a pandemic and a crisis, you know, it would make sense to start another big project. So I started sketching out some ideas and you can see the boat and the pump sort of layout, and we'll keep on going. This may mean more to some than others, but this is the performance curve for the pumps that I bought from Harper Freight. It shows the discharge head, or basically PSI, on the vertical axis and flow on the horizontal axis. It says discharge head on the on that vertical axis, but if you divide each one of those numbers by two, it basically gives you the PSI and then the corresponding flow rate. I have a few pictures here just so you can see the pumps located in the back. This picture is one angle and I have two more. Here's another angle kind of looking at it from the side. 
Here's a third angle looking at it from the other side, the opposite side of the pump. And at this point, I don't really know how serious I was, but one of my good friends suggested that maybe I put a third pump in here. So I pushed the two pumps apart to see if I could stuff in a third one and ultimately decided not to. These are my motor mounts. So basically I attach the motor and pump to these little blocks, super simple, just countersunk holes. I could put the hardware up in there and attach it to the, the engines and the pumps. But basically that allowed me to fix a piece of wood to them so then I could easily attach those pieces of wood to the pieces of what I had mounted in the boat. So now you can see both pumps kind of placed where they're going to be at the proper elevation. I'm starting to visualize what it's going to look like and it's really starting to look kind of awesome. Here's another image so you can kind of see the frame I built and attached to the ribs inside the John boat. So all that's just you know, regular untreated two by fours. And I attach those to the boat. And then you can see those engine blocks or motor mounts, whatever you want to call them, that then allowed me to shift the pump and the engine around easily and then screw through those blocks into the frame on the boat. Here's another view of the frame and the motor sitting on their little motor mounts. Pretty simple setup. This is not a you know, an entry in a beauty contest. I was going for functionality here. At this point, I had attached a few of the plumbing fittings that threaded onto the pump housing and had bought the flanges that I would attach to the floor. Those were Schedule 80 gray uh, pipe flanges like you'd bolt a, a large pipeline together with. Um, that's what I used to mount to the floor of the boat and then brought that up with an elbow and was starting to plan out how I'd tie it in and then exhaust it over the back of the transom. While I was building this boat, I guess my two-year-old at the time came out and wanted to play, so he got to play with all the pipes. So here on the dry erase board, you can see some of my thoughts around how much things weigh and trying to calculate there on the right side how many holes I needed to drill to be equivalent of a three-inch pipe and just some other general notes around what I wanted to do with the build. Here you can see the pipe flange and basically getting it lined up and ready to bolt down. And here's a close-up of the hole through the boat and then hole in the flange. And then obviously I ended up putting a bolt through all of that. So I was laying out all the plumbing and I figured it would be a good time to have a frothy cold one before I got all the the purple stuff and the solvent glue out and on the next slide you'll see the mess of plumbing here we go here's all the various fittings that I'm getting ready to glue up took a bit of time to make sure everything was right pretty large diameter uh, pieces they seem to set up pretty fast you can also see there on the bottom I have the flanges already bolted down and a ton of clear silicone kind of squeezing out that actually worked out really well and I've used this boat a lot and have yet to see a leak. Here's another view of the various plumbing fittings and whatnot laying around. And at this point, I don't know why, but I stopped taking pictures of things. So it jumps from this to basically finished product. So I wish it was that easy, but it took a lot of work to get to this point. Uh, you can see those two batteries sitting there. That's not part of this build. I ended up taking that out and the trolling motor off. But I mounted two chairs with swivel seats and put on the uh, bimini top or bikini top, whatever it's called. And uh, it was looking pretty good. Here's a picture from where I put it in for its maiden voyage. Uh, coincidentally, I actually put it in at Maiden's Landing, which is one of the closest boat landings west of the city of Richmond on the James River. So that's where it took its first launch and it worked out really well. So I didn't have any pictures, like I said before, but in this image you can see how I've linked together both motors on the front side where you go from like turtle speed to rabbit speed. That's all linked together and comes up to a stick steer up the front where I'm sitting. And similarly in the back, if you look over the the, the back of the boat, 
there's a little diverter on where the water comes out that's a stick steer all linked together which I control up front. So there it is that's the boat and I thought that was a pretty cool image because you can see my very homemade or DIY boat sitting next to a legitimate jet boat which I think is a, a rhino jet. Uh, I think it probably has like a probably a 50 horse mercury on there and that thing can fly up the water but uh, pretty cool to see at the end of the day they're they're pretty comparable and uh, had a lot of fun making it so enjoy the video coming up next